Rocket Lab has given their long-awaited major update for their next rocket, Neutron. Unlike the teasers we were given earlier in the year, this is the real working design goal for the Neutron vehicle, and as you can see, a lot has changed. So today, I'm going to run you through what we've learned and my initial thoughts on the concept. First, let's have a quick look at the rocket. If you haven't yet, check out Rocket Lab's official announcement for all of the details. But basically, Neutron is a two-stage rocket with first stage reusability. The rocket stands 40 meters tall, 7 meters wide, with a 5 meter payload fairing. Both stages are made out of carbon composite and use a new methane engine Rocket Lab is currently developing called Archimedes. The first stage has seven of these engines, and the second stage has one vacuum optimized version. Now let's get into the parts of the design that I like. Beck begins the presentation by saying, you start the design process at the satellite and all the spacecraft you need to launch and design around that. And he is exactly right. Next, they claim that 80% of upcoming satellites will be small satellites that are part of constellations. And with all the constellations we've seen announced, I really don't doubt that metric. But at an 8 ton payload capacity to low earth orbit, Neutron can serve well outside of the small sat market alone. When you look at all of the payloads Falcon 9 has flown, outside of Starlink, nearly all of them are well below 8 tons, so Neutron can serve the vast majority of the launch market. Neutron should be pretty good at ride sharing overall. That 8 ton payload is slightly limiting, but as long as the launch cost is low and the flight rate is high, it should be on par or better than the Falcon 9 in this space. As for the physical design of the rocket, what has to be my favorite design element are the static legs. This is peak design in my opinion. Static legs don't have to retract or deploy, and this is a big deal. Not only are they easier to design and build, they eliminate a failure mode. If your landing gear don't extend or fully lock for some reason, your rocket isn't landing. But the bulk of the benefits are actually for reuse, which is why we even need legs in the first place. Static legs don't need to be retracted before the flight, and their simplicity also means they don't really need to be inspected or refurbished between flights. Eliminating all of these steps saves time and money for launches. Now, somewhat oddly, despite being called static landing legs, they are actually shown retracting and deploying in all of the animations. The movement is quite small, and it's a simple straight up and down, so it's still mostly static, and the legs would need some sort of shock absorption anyways, so I don't see this as a huge deal, but these legs definitely aren't 100% static. Better than most, and certainly better than no legs. Rocket Lab has made a similar move with the fairings for Neutron, which they are calling the Hungry Hippo fairing. Unlike most rockets, the payload fairing is actually attached to the first stage of the vehicle, and inside of it, it holds the second stage and the payload. After main engine cutoff, when the second stage and payload are released, the fairing can close back up, remaining attached to the first stage that then returns to the launch site and lands. This design decision falls right in line with the philosophy of designing a vehicle from the ground up for reuse. When your reusable vehicle comes back from a mission, you want to get it ready to fly again as fast and cheaply as possible. If it comes back in several pieces that are scattered all across the globe, and you need boats, helicopters, barges, and cranes to get it back in flying order, you're eating into that margin that reuse has saved you. With Neutron, Rocket Lab gets back one piece, right at the launch site. To fly it again, they simply need to inspect and refurbish the vehicle, hopefully minimally, and then place a new second stage along with its payload inside of Neutron and it's off to the launch pad. This philosophy of reuse is perhaps best represented by their engines. Neutron will have new methane engine for both the first and second stage called Archimedes. And to be honest, there's not much that is special about this engine. And that is exactly what is special about it. Rather than push the envelope of material science and the laws of physics, Rocket Lab's goal is to make a reliable engine that has a long lifespan 
and is easy to inspect, refurbish, and reuse. It's using a simple gas generator cycle, and Peter Beck sums it up best when he says, there is no point in having an engine that is absolutely busting its bolts. What we need for a reusable launch vehicle is an engine that can run over and over again at very low stress. So as you can see, there's a lot to like about this vehicle, and I'm really loving their design philosophy of having performance take a back seat to reuse. But now I want to talk briefly about a design decision that I'm on the fence about. And that is the decision to make the first stage out of carbon fiber. The second stage being carbon fiber makes complete sense. So quite a lot of their announcement video is dedicated to this material choice. And I'll get to what I see as the positives and negatives of this choice, but first let's talk about this so-called test to prove carbon fiber's superiority. All this test actually shows is that metal is a more ductile material than carbon fiber, which is more rigid and brittle. Depending on the application, either of these qualities could be a strength or a weakness. Carbon fiber is a material that is very strong, until it isn't, like glass or wood. A sheet of glass or plywood would have also survived this test. It doesn't mean that it's a good material choice for a reusable orbital vehicle. And that's the main problem with the test. An I-beam swinging into a flat sheet of material is not exactly a good analog for the forces experienced on a rocket during re-entering into the atmosphere. Beck even states this earlier in the presentation. Re-entry is not a structural problem, it's a thermal problem. Steel and aluminum are far superior to carbon fiber in this regime. Even with the unique shape of neutron helping to manage this heat, having a material that is better suited for high temperatures is better, especially for flying over and over. Rocket Lab already has to add a graphite coating on Electron because carbon fiber needs it to survive re-entry. Two other big strains on rockets are temperature and pressure cycles. The airframe of a rocket goes from ambient pressure to pressurized during flight and then into a vacuum while it's pressurized. Doing this over and over is very stressful on the tank materials. The material starts at ambient temperature and then it's filled with cryogenic fuel and then nearly melts itself on re-entry. Again, metal not only performs better at this wide range of temperatures, but it's much better at dealing with these repeated cycles, which is what you want for reuse. Now, beyond all that, another reason this decision seems questionable is it abandons the design philosophy used on the rest of the vehicle, like the engines, legs, and fairings. This decision, in my opinion, sacrifices reuse for performance. When we look at the philosophy behind the fairings, it's let's leave it attached to the first stage. Sure, this makes them a little bigger and heavier, and now the first stage has to carry them on a boost back burn and landing burn, but that's fine, it makes reusing the rocket easier. With the legs, let's put simple, strong legs on there. Sure, we could have a tower catch the thing out of the air and not even need legs at all, but this makes reusing it easier, so we will have them. With the engines, why go crazy pushing engines to the extreme limits and getting the best efficiency and thrust? No, let's make it simple, cheap, reliable, and reusable. But now look at the materials. This philosophy is not only abandoned, it's basically flipped on its head. Let's not use simple, durable, reliable, reusable materials like metal. Let's instead use a super cutting edge material that is more expensive, less durable, worse for reuse, but is the most extreme and mass efficient bleeding edge solution. Near the end of the presentation, Beck says a reusable rocket should have materials that withstand all the forces of re-entry, are cost effective, and easy to manufacture. Now maybe it's just me, but that looks like a list of things carbon fiber is not. At the very least, metal is far superior in each of these categories. But anyways, as I said, I'm on the fence about this decision. And despite what I've stated so far, I actually lean in the direction of agreeing with Rocket Lab's decision to make it from carbon fiber. Does it clash with their overall design philosophy? Absolutely, but that doesn't make it the wrong choice. 
A design philosophy is not sacred, it's more of a rule of thumb, and it's best to not be dogmatic about it and evaluate each decision independently and choose what's most beneficial. Carbon fiber will obviously benefit Neutron in the mass department, so if they can get some extra performance margin here, they can even further relax the requirements for their engines, legs, and so on. And Rocket Lab is uniquely experienced with building carbon fiber structures and seeing how they can survive re-entry. So basically, Rocket Lab decided to make the hardest part of Neutron exactly what they are best at, which is pretty smart. My main concern with the material will be its long-term lifespan. How many re-entries can it take? I should point out that since Neutron returns to launch site when it lands, it actually experiences less heating than Electron does on its re-entry. So hopefully that's enough to make it a non-issue. So overall, I'm loving the current design of Neutron. I think Rocket Lab made a lot of bold and correct decisions when designing it, and it also looks really unique, which is always a point in my book. Now let's take a quick look at what the future may have in store for Neutron. Just like any vehicle, we should expect subtle changes as it's actually developed. But as far as future upgrades, I think Neutron is primed to have a full reuse variant down the road. During the announcement, they even say that the current second stage, at this point in time, is disposable. So yeah, that door is wide open. They can just make a 5 meter reusable second stage and put it in place of the current fairings on top of the first stage. While a reusable second stage could potentially hurt the margins to orbit, it also eliminates the cost of not only the upper stage, which is likely the biggest line item in a neutron flight, but it also would save Rocket Lab from having the operational costs of continually producing these second stages. I think starting off with the expendable second stage is a smart move to get the vehicle operational fast and upgrade it later. Also, time will tell, but I think even with the expendable upper stage, Neutron will be a very competitive entry in the market. I also think we should keep an eye out for a crew variant of Neutron and possibly even a Rocket Lab crew vehicle to launch on Neutron. They say they're currently not developing one, but they always mention that Neutron is being made with crewed spaceflight in mind. NASA has a huge effort to commercialize low Earth orbit, and a new commercial crew program for 2027 and beyond is coming up. So I wouldn't be shocked to see them have a bid for that program that relies on the Neutron rocket for the flight. NASA also has four new commercial space stations in the works that this potential vehicle could fly crew and cargo to. And if you want to learn more about NASA's next space stations, check out my latest video on CLDs. To wrap up, I really like the Neutron concept. With the exception of the first stage tank material, it seems like every single design decision has been filtered through the lens of what is best for reuse, and I think that's the way to do it for a reusable launch vehicle. I think Neutron will be a formidable and successful vehicle in the future launch vehicle lineup, which might I say is looking absolutely awesome. The future is seriously bright. Thank you all so much for watching and make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't. Let me know your thoughts on the Neutron vehicle in the comments below and I'll talk to you next time.